Um, well, we're meant to be 25, and what we usually do when we've got more than about uh, 15 is we uh, don't allow you to do anything more than introduce yourself by first name and say hello and possibly uh, where you're sitting. So you sort of tell us that you're in Berlin or you're in uh, Amsterdam or, or London or Long Island. So we'll, we'll do that in a minute. We'll just keep going at the moment. If anyone wants to write anything in the chat, um, you find that you're looking at a computer top right hand corner. Um, we'd love it if you um, uh, wanted to put in any questions, comments, or views about what's going on while um, after the mic or a chatting and talking about their work. Um, please put them in. It's really important for those who guess to have yourself muted unless you're actually you hear all those lovely background noises which are going on at the moment. I'm Andrew Stuck. I'm one of the co-producers of Walk, Listen, Create. Um, Babak hidden away behind a screen somewhere is there. Um, Het Vermeer is here as well. Um, thank you very much for joining us for the cafe. Uh, so just uh, quickly on the cafe. So the idea of the cafes uh, really came forward uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, the idea was to give uh, uh, sound and walking artists an opportunity of uh, provoking discussion about the work that they do. And we've been able to continue them every fortnight since then, every two weeks. And we'd love to hear from you yourselves uh, in the audience at any time that if you would like to uh, uh, present in a cafe and be a guest in a cafe, we'd love to hear from you and discuss uh, how we might make that happen. Um, the uh, way we're guess, going to do this, uh, we've got 15 people. So I think what we should do is uh, give everyone an opportunity of just uh, in turn switching off their, um, uh, switching on their microphone and saying who they are and where they're from and giving us a wave. Uh, and then I'll introduce uh, Renata and Michael um, and Soundtrack City, and then we'll rock on. Hello, so uh, my name's Anne Rutherford. I'm an artist and I live in Settle in North Yorkshire, UK. Brilliant, Arthur. Uh, so I'm Arthur, I'm French. Um, I'm student actually. Um, and I work in the sound because I'm. Uh, I work with an association, a group, uh, which a French one, which is named Let's uh, Soundscapes Pedagogy, and this I'm really interested in the different uh, in what people do with sound in general, so that to get inspired. Let's say. Great. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Hello. I'm Fiona. Um, I live in North Devon. That's about it, really. <laughs> Um, Het, would you like to send anything? Uh, hi all, I'm uh, Geert. At this moment I'm in Bruges, Bruges in Belgium and looking forward to talk more with you. Hello, hello. Uh, I'm Guy um, and I am in Amsterdam in the Netherlands and uh, yeah it's a wonderful to see you all um, hello uh, and uh, I'm here uh, being invited by uh, Renata and Michiel from Soundtrack City who have recently done the, the collaboration with uh, as a contributor to the listening guide so oh, it's brilliant. lovely to Thank see you, you so it's much okay we're going to hear more it's about lovely that to that's see you all. cool um, hey, nice Edith. to meet you hi I'm Edith um, can you hear me we can. yes uh, yes and I'm an artist. I've done stuff with Andrew before. Um, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm calling from Cambridge, actually, Cambridge, UK. Hi, uh, my name is Inke. I'm in Utrecht in the Netherlands. And I'm an artist, walking and uh, listening artist. <laughs> so. Mike. I'm uh, Hi, I'm Dutch, living in uh, uh, Düsseldorf, Germany. Um, at a later age, I started studying again, so I'm now a student visual anthropology. I'm uh, very interested in uh, learning what what you can do with sounds. That's why I'm here. Thank you. Great, Richard. 
Yeah, hi there. My name's Richard White. I'm uh, uh, a European citizen, but I'm stuck over in England. Um, and <laughs> talking to you from Bath. Uh, Bob? Uh, Bob, the new forest. Hi, I'm um, Sarah and I'm a poet from Kent in England. Hello, I'm Shelley and um, I live in Brighton in England and I'm interested in accessibility, especially for disabled users. Hi, I'm Viv. Um, I'm British but based in New York and I'm a walking sound artist. Okay, well, welcome everyone. and. Um, I'm, I'm going to read a little bit of introduction about Ramatra and uh, Michael, but I have to say straight up that I have been a fan of Soundtrack City for several years and envy what they've achieved because uh, a lot of the stuff they do has uh, been right up the sort of avenues that I'm really interested in. So I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing from them. And, and not least because I think they've really cracked it with a listening guide for lockdown. And we're going to hear a little bit about um, how we can start to uh, listen to our surroundings more closely, even if the surroundings are literally the, the apartment uh, in which we're, we're living. So um, I'll just read you a little bit of blurb that they provided, um, which is about them. And um, then I'll hand over to them. So, uh, they're co-founders and co-directors of Soundtrack City, a non-profit artist-led organization focusing on research and the development of new collaborative artistic practices concerning sound and the urban milieu. Soundtrack City develops new forms of media art and demonstrates new listening practices, initiates participatory research projects with local communities, and produces sound walks with and without headphones. Founded in 2009, Soundtrack City is active in Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Istanbul and Berlin. And the organization has developed from a cultural collective producing sound art in public space to a participatory and artistic research agency that focus, focuses on the social, political and cultural aspects of sonic urban environments. At the moment, Soundtrack City is involved in three research projects, each developed together with different communities and organizations. They are Sonic West, Crowdsourcing Mr. Weisseplan, I hope, and Urban Sound Lab, but I'm sure we'll hear more. Over to Renata and Michael. Yeah, thank you for, uh, for this introduction. <laughs> and uh, I think yeah, we we should focus uh, this cafe uh, on the on the listening guide because it's it's so rich and and made by uh, four well nice authors. So I think we we should talk very briefly about uh, Soundtrack City itself. Yeah, as you said, we 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 started in uh, 2009, and actually we are a sort of uh, intruders in the field because uh, Renata is a theater director and I'm uh, originally a visual artist. So uh, we had to, to do a lot of, of uh, yeah, study and, and exploration ourselves in, in this field of sound and listening before we, we, we felt we had a grasp on it. And, uh, but we, we had a head start in 2009 with a collection of, of nine. Eight. Uh, eight. Yeah, you're right. Uh, eight, uh, audio walks. And we tried to, yeah, sort of generate a, a, a portrait of a big city, of the city of Amsterdam. And we invited, uh, eight couples of artists. Sometimes they, they didn't know or knew each other. Uh, beforehand and uh, asked them to make uh, well what we called then a sound walk which is not literally literally a sound walk but more like an audio walk because they they were walked with headphones well this was really nice and uh, they're still um, available available and still uh, you can still do them and even this in 
these pandemic times uh, that we uh, geo unlock them so people can do them on their couch so sort of virtual walk and uh, yeah that it's nice to have such a sort of legacy of, of, of or a question of walks and um, yeah to to come to this this pandemic it's it's really a, a strange time uh, almost a year ago we were plunged into it and we thought well a couple of months and we the, we will we'll get this to get a grip and uh, but now still we are in it and it's even more severe and so um i'm very happy that we managed to to make this listening guide eh? homing inside out uh, the title is a little bit yeah uh, tongue and cheek yeah you 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 want to be home but you also want to go out and but sometimes you can't and uh well we hope with the the scores in the booklet uh you can yeah sort of go out or at least reach out to other living creatures human or not human yeah maybe i i should uh tell a little bit about how this came about the the listening guide we were uh zooming or or well with other techniques with uh, a few other artists and uh, cultural workers uh, whom we never met in the flesh it was very strange uh, to to do another uh, sound walk art project yes yeah uh, actually guy who is also partaking in this in this uh, cafe he invited us to uh, because he has an inclusive um, yeah, inclusive band in Amsterdam of uh, people who are musicians, but who used to live on the street, and they know the city really from yeah being outside in the city. And he made a projection, uh, slow down Amsterdam. But it was impossible during uh, the first lockdown to present this as a sound walk. So. They came to us. Uh, if we could make a sound walk which you can just listen to while confined. And when we were discussing this project production, uh, somebody I don't remember who that. Oh yeah, I know how it came about. Uh, we were telling them about a listening guide we made a few years ago. Uh, where people can go to a very small park uh, in the middle of Amsterdam and do a listening walk uh, with points in the park where, where they should focus or, or have sort of ambience, ambient listening uh, experience. And this guide was also, you could also uh, return it with your impressions. And then during one of the Zoom calls, Somebody said, isn't it a good idea to make this for people who are confined uh, to their homes? And at that moment, we we started uh, yeah, planning this, this little guide, which you all hopefully know. And uh, it was made possibly possible by uh, an other art initiative, quite famous. It's called STEIM in Amsterdam, maybe a lot of you know it. And uh, unfortunately, STEM is now uh, yeah, sort of gone, but the, the, their funding stopped. unfortunately stopped. But they funded uh, the, the making of this, of this guide. Yeah, this first listening guide we did in the park, it, it had one sort of listening uh, position sort of well cajun perspective like you you should listen to your uh city as it is as if it is music but we thought for being at home uh to invite uh, a, a few 
people from different uh, backgrounds. backgrounds. Yeah, and also generate uh, different scores, not only uh, listening as it if as if it is uh, musical material, sound, but also sound as a way to get a connection uh, with with your environment or your world or your small world, or even uh, sound as a way of performing, like the the, the scores guy would make made. Um, my idea is to uh, well, to do two scores together with all of you. Um, but maybe before that, I can invite Guy, because he is taking part uh, here, uh, to say mm -hmm. something about his contribution. Yeah, would you? No, absolutely, it'd be an absolute pleasure. And uh, thank you for inviting me here. And uh, yeah, it's really cool to see you all. Um, I I am a I'm a well as you can maybe tell, I'm from North I'm from North Yorkshire in England uh, originally. Um, I moved uh, to the Netherlands some five years ago. Uh, now with my family, um, I'm a drummer and a composer. Um, uh, by profession, and I I work here also on a European Masters program, uh, which is which approaches new, a new audience and innovative practice through those experiences uh, within that domain. Um, I've had the wonderful opportunity to meet and work with some fantastic sound artists and um, begin to learn some of the domain uh, of wonder that it is. Uh, so it's a real pleasure to also get this this opportunity um, to work with Soundtrack City and uh, Michiel and Renata in uh, getting the opportunity to collaborate and become further involved and uh, thus here tonight as well. Um, so in Amsterdam, uh, just a little background as um, to some of the kind of more, well, performative element of the scores that I contributed to the listening guide. Um, as uh, Mikhail said, the our point of connection um, almost a year ago now uh, was through these Zoom calls, uh, which were a reach out from. Um, I work a lot with Stein, um, or the, for, the former Stein. Um, so we were exploring collaborations with my uh, Stichting or foundation um, in Amsterdam called the Mystifiers, uh, that's an inclusive orchestra slash collective. Um, bringing awareness and visibility to issues related to homelessness. Um, we charity with uh, partner uh, organizations in the Netherlands, um, the service providers for the uh, uh, homeless care sector, um, and we've been running the Stichting now and the orchestra for some five years. Um, and we were exploring what could happen with uh, Stein um, as the uh, studio for technology uh, and electronic instrument making <laughs> to see what further stuff we could do because they were in the domain of trying to work more in the social uh, field. Um, so we were looking at partnership opportunities. And then uh, lockdown, when lockdown happened, just as we were uh, about to do the final performances of Slow Down Amsterdam, which was our kind of 2019 project um, <clears throat> that was, it looked like, basically it was a, a multimedia project working with visual artists and it was to be, be performed in kind of regular regular venues um, with tickets and real audiences and you know all that sort of stuff uh, and then we couldn't so um, uh, of course for us there was two main issues feeding our need to not take that as uh, a wall um, and for us to actually stop but to find a way to proceed with our uh, well primarily our connections with our band members which is super important um, and then also for the purpose of being able to finish the project and work with uh, the public funding organizations and all the rest of it um, to try and find a way to make some output. So uh, Renato and Michiel came onto the Zooms um, in uh, an explorative process to try and work that out. So the exercises for the listening guide that I contributed, I felt it would be really nice to find a way to bridge between some of the themes we were also exploring with Slow Down Amsterdam 
uh, and the mystifiers and uh, literally kind of tie over some of the activities, some of the workshop processes um, that we'd already been looking at. Um, it's funny that the, our project was called Slow Down Amsterdam. I uh, began uh, in uh, early two, 2019 and then some 13, 14 months later, the whole place totally slowed down. Um, so already in that process, we, with our band members, we were exploring kind of deep listening exercises and stuff uh, inspired by Pauline Oliveros and um, that we're kind of familiar with. And then we just take kind of an improvisatory uh, approach um, I run that band with a great flautist called Micah Vanderlinder, um, who's a great workshop leader as well. So yeah, we just kind of have a lot of fun with exploring our own take, our own taste on um, maybe some processes that all you guys are really familiar with too. So yeah, it was also what I think I have to say, it was a real honor to get the chance to write this stuff down and make something in this, I've actually got it here. Mm -hmm. Um, into this beautiful physical pamphlet um, that's become also a real tool for our household uh, in this time and uh, getting the, pro the uh, opportunity to spend time in the process of thinking about what is relevant for us all and also what would be re relevant for many of the mystifiers uh, or, uh, or, or certainly their community which during this time um, are very very isolated. So it was also kind of like, how can I add more material to their fun to bring some uh, connectivity, um, some learning, some experiential happenings through the power of listening. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's um, where we're at. And I think it's exciting to also say that we're exploring what's next. Uh, this was a great first journey um, and certainly from on uh, my behalf, I'm very much excited to uh, looking at the next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Guy. Uh, another yeah. thing is I know uh, uh, Sharon also uh, joined this meeting. Oh, thanks. Yes, I'm kind of dropping in. The whole the downstairs studio was used by my two sons all evening for dance online and then drum lesson online. So now I have it for me online. Um, yeah, basically from my deep listening background and also from the question to um, put in text scores that have to do with embodied listening, I think the two things that I, um, well, the three things I decided to focus on was that, that rhythm of waking up and falling asleep, as um, listening in dreams with Ioni, um, the longtime partner, artistic partner and um, marriage partner of Pauline. Um, emphasizes that we can also make it a 24-hour listening experience. So how do we go from the um, the dream and the nighttime into the day and, and then back again? And these are moments when we can um, also kind of tap in to the, yeah, I don't know if you want to call it subconscious, unconscious, the other consciousness that is much vaster than our <laughs> rational consciousness, of course. And the other thing was trying to think of inclusivity. So could my scores be performed by those who are not particularly um, involved with cochlear listening? So those who people who are involved with other forms of listening. So maybe the profoundly deaf or a hard of hearing. So thinking of how to talk in terms of vibrational um, information rather than only um, the sound that we hear through the eardrum. Um, um, auditory centers of the brain connection. And then also I, when I um, was first doing creative work with deep listening, I got very interested in spiders because they have all these eyes, but we're not sure what they're seeing all over their bodies. And they also how they listen with their, with the vibrations of the web and how they're picking up these energies through, through their, um, through their feet. And I love Spiders, and it really breaks my heart that so many people hate them so much and want to always kill them. And so, because I think they're just such, I mean, they're top predators, of course, but their listening is in a way very predatory, but it's also just really amazing uh, listening kind of techniques that I, of course, I can't really approach, but it, it metaphorically, it's fun to approach. And so that was, um, 
one of my, the inspirations for the becoming spider. So inclusive listening, listening as you wake up and fall asleep and thinking about listening like an animal. Thank you. Um, yeah, maybe it's it's nice to, uh, my idea was to, to, to do two scores together, one a little bit more perceptive and the, the other more performative. And uh, there on on the page, where are they? Page nine of the little booklet. And but I will uh, just shorten them them a little bit uh, because they are too long for this setting. Uh, but I will read it out loud, so you don't have to read, and I will just read it. Uh, score two. Remembering your listening. Uh, I just want to ask you all to close your eyes for three minutes after I uh, stop talking and try to remember what you heard in your home the last week. And then write down what sounds you remembered. And after this score, we have a, a short interaction uh, about, yeah, I want, it, it would be nice if you all could tell us what you wrote down. So let's start these three minutes now. Thank you. That felt like a very long period of time, three minutes. <laughs> so uh, let's have one minute uh, to, to write uh, down what you remembered from the last week. Well, would you like people to write it in the chat? Uh, yeah, I can't see the, the chat, but uh, whatever they like. Yeah, that's maybe a good thing. Yeah, very good. Huh. It's very, very nice. I just read uh, some some uh, remarks on the on the chat. For example, the sound of the big boats uh, on the on the Rhine appeals a lot to me. Maybe also to Renate. She's from Cologne. Um, yeah, but uh, to start, uh, I want to say something about uh, here in Amsterdam. Um, two days ago. We we got a, for the first time since the Second World War in, in, in Holland a curfew. So it was really, really, really quiet. And even at this moment, uh, it's 20 minutes uh, to nine and at nine the curfew starts. Uh, it's really quiet. So th these last three minutes, uh, yeah, it, for me it's heaven. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what I remember from the last week, um, yeah, it's the helicopter because there is so much going on. People are uh, really revolting. Uh, well, I think this is more hooliganism than than actually. Yeah, revolt. It's it's very strange. I don't have. I didn't make my mind up, but it's it's also quite eerie and and a little bit frighten frightening. Yeah. So that's what I remembered.
So it's really nice to to read through these other impressions from last week from all over the place. The kettle on the stove, a coffee machine, cutting onions, small birds in the garden, footsteps in the hallway, a vacuum cleaner, the voice of my baby granddaughter on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, the cat, the cat meowing, music playing, gas on the stove. Uh, so Sharon, you also have a cat. We have a very young cat. Uh, we got a very young cat recently, and this individual is exploring our little little home uh, as a madman. But we hear a lot of cat noise. <laughs> and Richard wrote, "Children playing in the snow." So you have snow or had snow? Oh. Richard, where's Richard? Based? Somewhere in, in the UK? Yeah, we had snow for a day. Well, it's actually sort of still here, but we had snow for a day and the whole of Bath just went out into the, there were snowmen, instant snowmen, Everybody was out sledging, all fairly socially distanced. It was it was just it was liberating just for a moment, and then it, it rained and we we're all due back in. Oh yeah, it melted away. Yeah, oh, too soon. <laughs> oh yeah, and Babak, he is in a other continent, so these sounds are quite different. But he's not in the city, also. Yeah, interesting. The, sound of the, sea. the lapping of the waves, the birds, the fishermen, the sand making noise as you walk on it. So this chat is really nice. I hope you everybody can read it. Um, and I want to move on to the second score. Um, this is something we cannot do with the chat. Um, but it builds upon uh, the, the score we did just now. I will read it aloud. Score three, recreating your listening. Try to recreate what you heard last week with your own body. Use either your mouth, your hands, your skin, your throat, your voice, your feet, etc. You can ask your roommate or companion in lockdown to record the sound you make. So um, it would be nice if a few of us uh, can put on their their what do you their audio and give us a recreation of uh, of what they remember. And maybe we can guess what it was. One sound per person. Andrew, can you uh, uh, select somebody to start? I hope you have an overview of everyone. You're giving me the power to inflict this embarrassment on yeah. someone. <laughs> well, you can also inflict it on me, so. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I'll see, if, is there anyone willing to step forward rather than, yeah? Sharon and Mike, why, why not we have uh, Mike, uh, Mike first, and then Vivian. So uh, Mike, Mike, is it? Sorry, forgive me. Uh, Mike. Yeah, it is Mike. Yeah, Mike. From Düsseldorf. Very nice. Yeah, I, I, I know what you, what now you were performing. Now guess first. <laughs> okay, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a big ship uh, going upstream. Yes, having a hard time getting to Arnhem. Oh yeah, that's that's downstream for you. Oh yes, that's downstream. Yes, to Cologne is upstream. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Huh. Okay, Vivian, very nice. You had your hand up next. Okay. 
It's it's very evocative. <laughs> is it an it? animal? Yeah, I I think it's a, it's a kind of tropical bird, but I don't know. <laughs> I wish. Actually, it's um it's me trying to be the construction sounds of the house being built next door. So there's a lot of roaring oh. and high beeps and... Uh, <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 <laughs> drilling. Playing. Yeah, drilling and digging and yeah. yeah. And throwing yeah, parts this, as well. Throwing stuff. Yeah, this throwing is something stuff. maybe all of us uh, are, are enduring now in these times uh, more than, than ever because it seems like a lot of People are thinking, what I, what shall I do with this free time? Yeah, let's rebuild my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I also saw uh, Bob. Could you put your hand up and then Sharon? I I don't hear Bob. Well, it was the sound. I, I was making a sound of the silence of the forest. So it was quiet. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Not even this tree falling. <laughs> no, there's occasional bird chirping, which is the cuckoo clock. But uh, I, I discluded the uh, dogs barking and the owners shouting at their dogs, which is basically noise pollution in the cars. And I tried to get to the the beauty of of the space and its silence. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Okay, Sharon, now your turn. I'm sorry I've made you wait, Sharon. I've been practicing. It's a very quiet time. <laughs> Did you hear anything? No, it was frozen. Do it oh, again. Oops. Okay. Did that work? Yeah, I think the, the sound is so tiny. But you you are rubbing your hands. But it's not the sound is supposed to be something else. <laughs> but it's yeah, yeah. that one. I'll give you a hint. Sound of someone sh shuffling through the snow. Yeah. Walking, or, yeah. This is getting close, but that was. It sounds more like that than what it. What I was actually thinking of. Yes, yeah. walking around in your slippers around house. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Flip flops. Yeah, kind of. Well, are yeah, you nice. also. Are they your slippers or someone else's slippers? Uh, I usually find if I wear uh, my wife's slippers, I can't fit them on my feet, so they make more noise. <laughs> yeah, we had these huge yeah. slippers when from my partner when I go out in the yard, and then those are really like flop, flop. <laughs> well, apart from all these interesting sound impressions, um, it is also yeah quite sometimes quite hard to recreate things you you remember to have heard like uh, rob uh, trying to recreate the silence of the wood woods um but this this challenging of of your own sound making uh, apart from from just uh, language is i think very worthwhile don't you agree um, that you can also communicate not only with with uh, with language or or written text, but but also with recreating the 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 sounds you heard and and yeah. So that I was trying to to yeah to to open this field sort of yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Renate is now working on a, a multi-year project called um, Urban Sound Lab. Urban Sound Lab. Yeah, and uh, this is actually the project is for and with the the community part of, of Amsterdam, Amsterdam South, and we hand out recorders to them and in a sort of estafette they record for one week their favorite sounds and then they give the recorder to someone else and we never know where the world will end up. But um, it's a sort of method um, out of your bubble, sort of, as an art researcher, and to engage for something else with sound. Well, we are um, we are, we are doing that project to um, sensibilize people uh, for for their listening, for their listening, and for the sound of their environment. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is that uh, Urban Sound Lab uh, project. And uh, we are working with different communities in the south of Amsterdam uh, and um, are presenting our findings to um, uh, artists and also to the neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the idea is to... Um yeah, sounds or recordings, they don't stand on, on themselves, but people always have a sort of feeling connected to what they hear. And we are trying to, to, uh, to surface what they exactly feel themselves or, or personally about the sounds they record. So they, they can upload the sounds to a sound map. Uh, there are thousands of sound maps, of course, uh, in the world. But this sound map, they have to uh, choose a, a certain emotion or a certain feeling and connect this with the sound. And when afterwards they can also communicate with other contributors uh, by this feeling. So they can click on this feeling and see, hey, uh, there are five very different sound impressions uploaded. I would never thought uh, the the other four to be connected to my feeling. So you you get a sort of uh, exchange about subjectivity and yeah, how to yeah, we hope also how to live together in a, in a dense city living. Yeah, and we just started with that map. Yeah, and it's a, a special map for the people in the neighborhood, it's not for no, no, it's everybody not, or it's the not, whole world. But it's not uh, a worldwide map, um, and I think we we are gonna present it uh, in in next. Yeah, Renate, I was wondering. Hey, uh, you telling you was telling that uh, people are uh, recording the sound. But do you uh, walk around in the neighborhood asking people to record the sounds, or do you work with uh, community centers and uh, or or other institutions, or how do you uh, how does it work? Yeah, um, well, um, it's very it's it's difficult to find people. So what we did and do is working with community centers and uh, small groups and uh, invite them to contribute to our project. That is how it works. Yeah. yeah. Through workshops or, or a small workshop or even uh, three workshops after each other. So one week a recording, second week listening to uh, the recordings everybody made and the third uh, week uh, writing about the writing. recordings you made. Yeah. 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 And uh, the last year you presented the results also in the theater. 
And there was a, a sort of live radio show. Yeah, what we try mm. or, or what, what we tried uh, the last years is uh, to present uh, the results in a, on a special uh, in a special way. And uh, we did twice. We did uh, live radio shows in a small theater in the neighborhood. Uh, and that was very nice because uh, the people who contri contributed or some of the people were there and also people from the neighborhood and we were listening together to the recordings and uh, we invited uh, sound artists uh, to do some compositions with the recordings uh, and it was uh, well very nice uh, to do. Uh, Bob was asking, you're introducing sound as a thing. What about it as a process or better as a force? Do you want to try and explain a bit more, Bob, about that? Yeah, yeah it's, it's Please. what I just put down. Um, I studied with Lee Strasberg in Hollywood in in, in the sens sensory work, Sanisaski sensory work. He worked with our autonomic nervous systems and through making sound, uh, we can mm -hmm. uh, emotional memory uh, triggered through the sounds, and actually smells work even stronger for a uh, quick recall of uh, of emotional memory. And in in that you create an internal reality um, th th from which mo I just it's an internal reality out of imagination. That's all. But it's just the potential of sound sensorially to. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, the imagination, essentially. Oh, the question is, what do you think about that? Well, uh, I think you're right. Um, and it's, yeah, it, then you're using your, uh, well, you're listening, uh, you're transforming it in a sort of uh, creative force, eh? as I understand it right. You're, you're using your lived experience as creative force, yes. Yeah, yeah, and but in the in the case of uh, the project of Renate, um, yeah, there there's an other uh, purpose or aim, actually to convince uh, city planners to think about sound, and yeah, not so much um, create a, a piece of art, but create uh, awareness. Yeah, and an awareness uh, amongst professionals to also uh, concern them with the sonic aspects of the city. So not only the visual or, but yeah, you're talking about smell or, or yeah, and and touch. This is well. still barren. Yeah. Blended. Touch is done. Wonderful. Well done, Renato. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I, I like the idea of um, having people interact around the subject of sound and listening. And um, have you noticed anything in terms of social cohesion, in terms of people getting to know each other better or developing maybe a nice um, atmosphere in the neighborhood? Has it had any impact that you um, would like yeah, to Yeah, I think so. You? Yeah, of course, this is a very small effect because the the group uh, the groups are yeah mostly five till seven people, but they during the workshops they they yeah they create a, a very yeah a bond. There there's there's coming a sort of com they they develop into a sort of a little community, and even after we left, they're still coming together and 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 doing things together. Maybe not always be uh, listening, but yeah, yeah, still. It's also a very social project. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's social. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a bit of a follow up on that. Uh, I really like the sound of the workshops that you're running with people. Um, and I'm wondering if you could say a bit more about what happens in work week three of the workshop when you said they write about the recordings. Do they do group writing or poetry or what, what kind of writing is that? Or are they writing yeah. scores? No, no, poetry, it was more. Yeah, some wrote, it, 
uh, it depended on the sound they recorded and uh, it was about the relation they had uh, or have with the sounds uh, and they were writing, they were free to write uh, whatever they want. Uh, so some uh, wrote poetry and others wrote a small story, mm -hmm. uh, different things. Yeah. But there was a theater writer uh, involved, huh? Who who led the the workshop? Yes, there was a, a not a theater writer, but somebody from the theater who is was also writing uh, was leading the workshop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. What I yeah, there was somebody who was writing, uh, for example, uh, what we called it. Uh, um, a, a real story based on the sound. Uh, he, uh, he recorded, and another person uh, used the sound to write a kind of fantasy. So different things. Very, very nice. Mm. Different. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Great. Wow. Yeah, thank you. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. Uh, thank and, you. Um, I, I was just going to quickly ask with, whether you find that. Um, you have to run a workshop to uh, to get people to record sounds. Because what something I found is that when I ask people to record sounds, they're very reluctant to do so. But when I get them in a kind of workshop, even on Zoom, and I get people doing things, I can be a bit more, you know, um, Mach you know Machiavellian, a bit more. Yeah, you you will you will record a sound, you know. Uh, but when I okay. ask them, genuinely, people find it, um, they find it quite a barrier. I don't think it's necessary that they don't know how to use a recorder or a, their phone, because they do, because they make calls yeah. all the time. But I just think they are reluctant to share a sound. I, but do other people feel the same? We're all in the mm. business, so we don't feel the same. But, uh, but do you mm. encounter similar things? Has anyone? Mm -hmm. I've done a couple of workshops with young one young people, and um, I think I kind of respect the reluctancy in some ways. I think it has, I don't know, it maybe has to do with this privacy or tapping into the creative kind of spirit. And in some ways, I also, there's like an ethics of recording as well that I think is really um, beautiful. Like, do I have the right to extract this sound from this environment? I don't know if that's what's always playing up, but I've certainly had that. It's like, okay. And also when you're recording on the street and you hear someone in Amsterdam speaking another language and you don't know what they're saying, but you've recorded them, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like, oh, I, did, I haven't asked permission, these kind of things. So, and I do, I think it is a, a strange, a, a, what I call it, a, a strange duck in the Netherlands of Frank de Ain, who loves to mm -hmm. just go out recording without any hesitation. I have noticed that. So, um, yeah, I think it helps indeed to share it or know that it's going to be listened to or have a reason maybe to make a recording. Because I think a lot of people yeah. just don't really know why, why am I doing this and just kind of to randomly do it. And that I do respect that. Like, okay, you, you I, I think you should have some kind of intentionality. I don't know if that's just me, but with recording. Yeah, that's 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 our uh, experience also with the workshops. You you have to provide a sort of purpose, and also sometimes, uh, what is that? An, an, that's a sort of instruction, a sort of instruction. Uh, or a question. Question, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a theme. Yeah, uh, and then everything comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Last year we were looking for, you can't record it, by the way, um, forgotten sounds or oh, yeah. sounds that are not existing or anymore, anymore yeah. in the city. So we had a lot of uh, elder people. Um, Talking about yeah, sound as a heritage or 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 sounds who don't which don't exist anymore. But then comes the 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 power of imagination and and them telling how it's founded. You never know. 
if if you understand it rightly, they uh, tell you. Um, the, I love the idea that you try to make a map that is global and local at the same time. So I have the impression that uh, your interest in the local uh, the, is, is making you um, is making your work as well unique. Uh, so could you tell something more about how the um, how this interaction with the people, local people, is going when you talk with them about sounds and the sounds of the neighborhood, and, and specifically how this is a means of communication. You always, you already talked about uh, the um, that sounds is going beyond the possibilities of language, and I suppose that's where you live uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, it's a very multicultural uh, environment, and do you? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the, the, are you able to uh, to get reactions, collaborations uh, with uh, people from different cultures by using this uh, way of uh, going beyond the uh, the language? Um, um, no, not yet. Huh? Nou ja, misschien wel met uh, slowdown en Amsterdam. Ah ja, ja. Yeah. That was very nice. Uh, well, Guy left, but uh, could uh, tell you a lot about uh, um, people from other cultures because uh, he was working. Uh, the mystifiers are working with homeless people or former homeless people, and a lot of them are from different uh, cultures. For example, Suriname and uh, Niger Africa, Nigeria, Nigeria. and uh, well, we uh, we only yeah we got could. a glimpse of uh, yeah their sound experiences, eh? and it was well short but uh, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 and. Um, other cultures, yeah, we had to, to start with them. We didn't do that yet. Yeah. Not really, uh, yeah, a little bit, but not. Um, not as a focus as point. As a focus point, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we had uh, a little collaboration with uh, a female researcher from the UFA, and she was doing a study uh, into the appreciation of, of different languages you hear on the street and if you then uh, feel at home or not. And she found out uh, people living in the middle of Amsterdam, they felt alienated because everybody in the street is talking English. Uh, yeah, mostly tourists. And nowadays this is completely changed because there there is no or hardly any tourism so suddenly uh, people uh, they see oh are you living here uh, and uh, pointing at each other and, and yeah finding out who actually lives in this quarter yeah but a very interesting uh, study yeah. yeah, but she was working in the also in the in New West in New West in the what is it suburbs suburbs yeah. yeah very interesting study yeah yeah oh yeah Andrew it just wrote in the chat London is now for Londoners uh, yeah this rings a bell uh, Renate is now making a podcast. It's yet to be published, and it's about the, the sonic experiences of Amsterdamers in the in the first weeks of the lockdown. And a lot of people were saying, um, Amsterdam, uh, "Amsterdam is now for the Amsterdamers." Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, I really and hate. Yeah, yeah, I find I found it a little bit problematic. Uh, uh, yeah, to, to to say it like this. Yeah, because Amsterdam is not only for Amsterdamers. <laughs> uh, yeah, this was a sort of freestyle answer to your question. I uh, hope uh, you like it, Geert. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, absolutely. Yes, uh, Andrew, would you like to elaborate a bit on your? Um, uh, yeah, I was, I was just going to say in the first lockdown, uh, when there was considerably fewer cars on the road, uh, far fewer uh, vehicles on the road, um, uh, and we were very much restricted, or at least we may not have been as restricted as we are now, but we were more obedient. Uh, and kept mm -hmm. to uh, the restrictions. Um, we we were only out, allowed to walk for an hour. So what you discovered was that all the people who walked in your neighbourhood were your neighbours. So it was not just London is for Londoners, but it was people in each neighbourhood were only um, were exploring the place, were exploring their neighbourhoods, and there was no other people. Um, because we're in where I live in uh, in Greenwich, um, famous for the Meridian Line and Greenwich Mean Time, uh, we have uh, we're, we're one of the most popular destinations normally uh, for tourists. Uh, not only tourists from beyond uh, the UK, but tourists from within the UK that come to London. They often come to Greenwich, so uh, our Parks and uh, public spaces and streets are full of visitors, let's say, visitors, non residents. And so suddenly we had a situation where all these spaces, which would normally be occupied by outsiders, by non, by, by visitors, was, were now being occupied by residents. Mm -hmm. And um, so it became a very, um, a very different experience, um, a strange, and haunting one for many, uh, but for some of us who spend our lives on foot uh, anyway and walk around our neighbourhoods all the time, um, it was it was almost comforting. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to see all your neighbours, I can assure you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, maybe this is uh, yeah kind of universal uh, for city life uh, during COVID nineteen. If you are allowed to 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 go out, that is. When you work with the group and your project in the neighborhood, did you also ask people um, if they had any recommendations for uh, people designing the city in relation to the sounds they found? Was that a part of your project? Part, uh, part of another project. Huh? Yeah, part yeah. of another project. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, that was Mr. Fisher Plan project. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, crowdsourcing yes. Mr. Fisher Plan. Yes. Uh, I think you were there. I was there. No, I was just I then I was confused about the other project. Hmm? That was a really interesting project. I found. Yeah, because it was really interesting. Yes, uh, but, but uh, maybe I sh shall elaborate a little bit on it. Yes. Uh, the Master Fisher Plan is a square uh, in the heart of the city of Amsterdam. But yeah, actually, you cannot really call it a square because it's more a traffic artery and it's always noisy uh, with a lot of traffic and especially when the the ring around uh, Amsterdam is a little bit slow. Uh, the, the navigators in the cars will point to this, this sort of shortcut through the city. So all the cars go through, uh, through the square. And we did a research with 20 uh, neighbors, neighbor, uh, 20 people from the neighborhood, either working there or living there or um, visiting, and uh, we asked them how could we redesign this place that it becomes livable or at least bearable to be there, because the municipality they designed uh, the place as a sort of place to stay. So there were seatings, there were uh, olive trees. little olive trees in in big pots. A lot of money was was put into this, but nobody was using it. And yeah, we thought this is a, a, a good example of how city planning works most of the time 
a lot of attention to the function or the, the looks and less to yeah how, how it feels or how it sounds how it smells uh, and these things are more yeah more important than than they than they than they realize so we thought uh, to to do this project to bring this on the agenda of the municipality of amsterdam and shortly it was a sort of blip on their minds but i think it vanished very quickly again <laughs> so it's it's not a success uh, story but at least we we made a few uh, redesigns of the uh, with these people for for the square, but they are not executed. Uh, th this might be a time for Bob to come in with his question because he you've asked something Bob about integrating the country into the city. Do you want to expand on that? Yeah. Is there any way that the silence of the countryside? Could be introduced into the the noise the noiseness of the city to to balance it out. Is there a way of well, bringing one environment into another? Yeah, I, I think uh, there are many ways. Uh, but first, yeah, you you have to uh, realize that it's not so much about silence or or too much noise, but about uh, uh, interesting. Yeah, experiences. So an, a noisy place can also be quite interesting. But there, there has to be, yeah, in, the, the, in most cities there's a sort of fog, a sort of auditive fog. So you cannot orient yourself because there, the sound is everywhere and everywhere the sound is sort of the same. Uh, but now we can experience that also in the city it is possible to have another sound yeah or soundscape as some people call it uh, when because the traffic is diminished or or even gone so suddenly you can hear further you hear other sounds you hear subtle sounds you hear your own footsteps you can talk with your companions these are very valuable things so it's not so much about um, silence. Yes, yeah, silence, but about balance. Yeah, balance or differences. So you you have to have uh, different milieus in a walkable distance. That's my little theory. Yeah, but there's also it throws it open to politicians who legislate against rules. But basically, why can't we legislate uh, to promote sounds? Or why can't politicians take on that, i.e. The, the, the sound, you know, the, how cities are at the present because of COVID and how you can hear things rather than this wall of sound or this buzz of sound behind, which is the city. Because I grew up in the city in London and I've moved down to the countryside. And it's just a way of integrating. Why can't you expand it beyond walking artists to politicians and other groups that, that, that can legislate. Well, firstly, you've got to raise consciousness that sound is everything before it's anything. Sound is the most basic of all our senses. And it more than anything, it describes what we are in the now. And, um, you know, getting politicians to be, or people who legislate and other groups of people to be uh, uh, aware of these things. It's just a, a consciousness raising exercise that you're initiating. And I, 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 I think it's fantastic. Uh, Sharon, you, yeah. you, you pitch in straight there's, away. Yeah? Yeah. There's um, Antonella Radici from Berlin. She has been editing Sound and the Healthy City. It's on Taylor Francis. And I um, participated in writing the editorial for that which um, my, my little part was about sound art in relationship to the healthy city. The problem is there is recently within the European Union, um, they have been now talking about noise pollution, especially the health, the noise pollution with health aspects in the kind of getting the same way as they've been talking about air pollution for a long time. The problem is of course coming up with standards that talk about sound because sound is so subjective. 
so when you're just talking about in terms of decibels, you know, like when you're talking about the masking of cars, that's clearly something that masks the um the more delicate and finer sounds. So that's fine. You could say that's bad, but there are some loud sounds of cities that are very, very popular and maybe like the sound marks or the, you know, the key tones for that for that city. So that's where you really come into problems with uh regulating sound because uh decibels it cannot be mapped onto the subjective enjoyment or non-enjoyment of sounds. So I think that's kind of the problem a lot of, um, well, besides the, my experience that municipalities are not so aware of listening or sound in any way. So that part is uh, very good. But when they do become aware of it, it's very much related to a health kind of decibel um, kind of mapping. And that's about the extent of it in a lot of ways, because that's kind of the easiest um, variable. It's been fascinating listening to this discussion. I'm very much at the beginning of learning about sound. Um, I've been recording sounds for a while, uh, but not putting them together into soundscapes. And that's what I want to do. I want to combine it with uh, what we would call an immersive walking experience. So I'm kind of all ears. And I'm absorbing all these fantastic ideas. It's been amazing listening uh, to uh, Renata. Uh, and those incredible projects that they've got going on. Um, I, my, I suppose the I live in an incredibly rural area, and I do think that I have different problems trying to engage with communities in a rural space as to as, as to artists do in an urban space. There's a lot less people for a start, and um, mm -hmm. people perhaps aren't even quite as aware of of art or culture or they might think that recording sound is a little bit more unusual because they haven't come across it so um but i do think doing some kind of community project would be really interesting um there's more sheep than people here in north yorkshire so there's a lot of noisy <laughs> sheep but okay. like, it's fascinating to think how i could use the sounds and I think as well the comment about heritage of sound was really interesting because we do have industry here we have quarrying and we have we are surrounded by small quarries and that's something when you think people would have been hand cutting stone out of the hillsides around here and using horses and carts to carry stones great distances to build everything that's around here there's so many things that you could try and find from the past to sort of explain why the countryside looks like it does now um i think and you can do it uh, also in your neighborhood also you are not in the city because um well what you uh, just suggested is a very good idea i think uh, to talk with people about the sounds from uh, the, the quarries or how yeah. it came about uh, the, the landscape. Yeah, very interesting, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the link between the landscape and the sounds that there would have been here. Mm -hmm. It would have been much noisier than it is now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, this is also a misconception about the city. The city used to be much noisier in the in the 19th century because there were not no uh, rubber tires. Uh, maybe the horses didn't make so much sound, but the the, the carriages or the the carriages? carriages or I don't know how you say it in English. They had. Uh, iron bands, right? And they they went about cobblestones. So I think it's a quiet city now. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But I I, I agree that uh, yeah, for me as a, as a city uh, inhabitant, I yeah I deplore that there are so many cars inside the city. It, 
maybe it's not even the noise, but uh, from 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 your childhood on, you have the feeling you cannot be on the road or play. Uh, there's always this danger. The, the, the feeling of danger, this colors the sound of the tires or the, 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 the cars, I think, subconsciously at least. Uh, well, I think that's an interesting point because uh, in the UK, we always look to Amsterdam as being a quieter city. And we also look to the, the Wunerf as the Dutch invention for a play street. So uh, I have to say that um, perhaps we uh, should be looking further afield because you guys think you live in a noisy city. We think you live in a quiet one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what you're used to and uh, you aim higher. <laughs> the bicycles are also very loud. Uh, maybe I can ask, what are you going to do next? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, well, there, there are still some big plans and uh, some small plans uh, to, yeah, to, of course, we, I, I can come back to homing inside out. Eh? We hope this pandemic will end and we have an other listening guide in the, in the works or a somewhat bigger park in Amsterdam. And um, yeah, this is this is not a plan, it's already being made. But we we are uh, thinking about producing more do-it-yourself uh, listening guides. So more um, empowering people to to engage with their own listening. Oh, that's why we we produce this uh, this guide, and I think we will uh, proceed with it. Yeah. And another uh, strand is that we really want to convince uh, politicians and planners uh, to develop an, an methodology which, which incorporates uh, listening, or at least design have an, a clue how your uh, your building of the city can can uh, sound so that's why we organize a lot of sound walks for planners and they always say at the end wow really interesting we should do something with it but yeah i hope they really are going to take the first step yeah. So that's our ambition. It's aimed quite high, but that's that's the big ambition. Uh, well, uh, and another area that I'm always interested in is what is going to be the sound that an electric vehicle uh, emits. Uh, and there's a well, lot of talk at the moment that they are going to make an electric vehicle sound like a uh, a combustion engine vehicle because we are so familiar with the sound of a combustion engine. Um, that uh, it would be more safe uh, for pedestrians to be aware of a vehicle that made a sound like a combustion engine. But uh, it's all part of the crazy world we live in. But I want to, I, I know it's very late now because you're an hour ahead from Greenwich Mean Time. So I just wanted to, to thank you both really very much for taking part. Um, Babak has something to say, which is good because I've probably forgotten something. Um, first, I've got a short reaction to uh, the conversation earlier about uh, cities becoming quieter uh, over time or having become quieter over time. I, I can't, of course, verify this, but I highly doubt it because although ambient noise might have been much louder in, say, the 19th century, electricity allows us to create noises that are much louder than uh, sounds no. that are not created with the aid of electricity, like uh, 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 drills or cars uh, or mm -hmm. you know, anything that is powered. Uh, but that has nothing to do yeah. with my question. The question that I have is really for Renate and Michiel, um, and that is the following. You started in 2009, I think, with the creation of Soundwalks through not exactly an app, because I think it was web-based or it was an app, but then uh, uh, it, was, uh, it became too old to, to be supported by the App Store or something. But you clearly moved away from creating sound walks to uh, 
a completely different type of project, uh, like uh, the the DIY home listening guide and the other things that you have talked about. Can you say a little bit about why you have moved, or maybe it wasn't conscious, but how it happened, and whether you think that this change has uh, is beneficial for you and for the people that consume your work? When did it happen? I think in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, then we already made uh, about 18 or 20 sound walks. And uh, people really loved it, or sound, not sound box, audio box. Mm -hmm. uh, people loved it, but we, what people uh, told us after uh, doing uh, an oh, audio wow. walk, uh, they say for uh, they said now we could listen better to the city, and that was for us the moment when we started to think. Well, this is a resource. This, this, this uh, better listening of participants. We thought uh, we sh we should do do something with that. So uh, to come back to this ambition to convince city planners to make a more uh, yeah to design a city with sound in mind. Uh, we think you can do that without the, uh, the sonic experiences of the inhabitants. So we have to, to talk to them, what they hear, what they like to hear. Uh, not so easy, because both parties do, to make uh, yeah, it's a major, big steps, they don't speak the same language, and they don't hear the same things. So. I think you should uh, walk together and uh, walk with with mixed groups and have an exchange afterwards, and then you can bridge this gap of uh, experience and uh, planning. But are you then talking about uh, providing a better listening experience to uh, the consumers of your work, or are you talking about improving the soundscape of the city by influencing the designers of the city? Yeah, the latter. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's it. So we started as a sort of, uh, of, yeah, sort of artist producers and now we are more, yeah, community researchers or researchers with the community into sound, into the sounding city. With the ambition and then I think to follow-up question. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. With the ambition, yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. Yeah, with the ambition to to uh, change this uh, sonic aspect for the better. Okay, uh, I think this is great, and I think that although we have dwindled in numbers, I think a lot of us uh, pursue uh, or try like to pursue similar goals. Um, but now my next question is, how do you get paid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, we can talk another hour about that. But uh, to a be, day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a, well, that's really hard. But maybe the rest of the audience has similar experience uh, because yeah, we are from the arts, and uh, in Holland the arts are not so well uh, door the niet zo gewaardeerd. Yeah. It's a hobby of the left, so, though, according to some politicians. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, we we should be constantly applying for funding, but that's really a bore. So sometimes we just do things and and we do it on a shoestring because we just want to do it. Yeah, that's a, that's the story. And sometimes we take other jobs. It's uh, yeah. It's not ideal. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, however, I want you to oh, end on a positive yeah. note, not on a down downtrodden note. So. Uh, well, we uh, are happy. We are poor but happy. Poor but happy, and also Renate, she got uh, a four-year funding for Urban Sound Lab. 
Yes. Hey. Starting this <laughs> January. Not much, not much. Yeah, but it, it's a start. It's a start, yes, yeah. yes. So that's very positive. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. That's what I want to add yeah, okay. to end on a positive. <laughs> and uh, for the whole community, we are aware that people are much more interested in sound and listening than a couple of years ago. That's true. So that is yeah. very positive for all of us. Yeah. Great. Well, okay. Well, I'd like to just um, say thank you very much, Renata and, and, and Michael. And for sharing your uh, stories, your experiences, and um, I keep going because I love Soundtrack City and uh, I'm really looking forward to another 10 years. So uh, um, I really oh. hope it <laughs> goes on and becomes a success. And thanks okay. everyone for staying the, the distance and we'd love to see you again. Um, as I say, every fortnight we're putting on a uh, an, another cafe, and if you feel bold and you'd like to try and be the guest at a cafe, we'd love to hear from you. But in the meantime, everyone stay safe. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you and, uh, very much. And thank, thank you all for uh, yeah, thank you. Thank nice you. interaction. Yeah.